Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and this week I'll be covering some amazing matches played by Vishwanathan Anand over the years as India's first chess grandmaster turns 51 on December 11. Now Vishy Anand as we call him with love, a five-time world champion faced off against Gary Kasparov, one of the greats this fascinating game of chess has ever seen at the Kasparov Anand World Championship match in 1995. Now, just to highlight the fact that Anand was facing Gary Kasparov, the Russian chess grandmaster who ranked world number one from 1984 to 2005, the year he officially retired from his chess career. Now, he was playing a strong opponent. And if you see the ratings as well, Kasparov had a higher rating. So, Kasparov was on his peak and so was probably Anand as well, trying to scale up his career from there on. And it was a fascinating match which held up in 1995. Now, let's go back to the game and see how it went for both the players. So, Anand had white pieces and started off with e4. Kasparov responds with c5, the Sicilian opening. And Anand goes with knight f3, standard moves here. And Kasparov responds with d6. Now, it's the main idea over here is to play pawn forward to d4, and that's what Anand does. Trying to go for the big center. Now, opponent can do a couple of things here. Can develop the knight, uh, which is the best move as per the engine, uh, by playing the knight over to uh, f6. Or you can even capture a pawn here so that after takes, you are not giving white a big center, and rather you have opened up the c5 for your attack. And that's good for black, actually. So that's what happens in the game. Uh, Kasparov takes, and Anand takes back with the knight, getting the uh, c file open up uh, for the attack from Kasparov. So Kasparov was pretty much comfortable here, not letting Anand get off with an early advantage in the game. Now, Anand, Kasparov responds with knight f6. Anand goes knight c3, and then pawn a6. Now this move a6 has become a lot popular move uh, from some time but the main reason behind it is it prevents bishop coming from b5 coming to b5 and even knight coming to the same square because there can be some tactics involved if your opponent gets to uh, b5 square which can be very much challenging for the opponent later on uh, so it's a nice square that you can take control of and that's why a6 by Kasparov straight away here, Anand develops the bishop on e2, trying and preparing to get castle quickly and develop, finish his development. And here, uh, a passive move, I would say, by Kasparov, playing uh, pawn e6. Could have gone for the center as well by playing e5. And that attacks the knight as well simultaneously. So the knight would have to be moved again, which would have become passive for Anand. And then Kasparov would have developed the bishop and castle. That would have been the best choice as per the engine. Of course, I am no one to tell what Kasparov was, uh, could have played, but engine is still listing that, so I'm just trying to convey that. Now here, uh, actually Kasparov played e6 rather, and Anand castles on the king side. Uh, it's always important to castle your king in the safety first before going for any kind of an attack. Uh, and so does Kasparov, develops the bishop on e7, preparing to castle on the king side as well. So Anand starts off uh, some attack on the queen side straight away. Seeing the advantage that opponent hasn't castled, the king is still in the center. You have to attack from some place and why not from the queen side? Because you have castled already on the king side. King is pretty much safe. So you can go ahead with the pawns on the queen side and take some advantage. Also your pieces are eyeing towards the uh, queen side here. So that's a good chance to take advantage. And that's why if you see Indian evaluation, it's 0.2 in favor of white already. Uh, here, uh, Castro develops the knight. Uh, yes, we can. Uh, Anand can go for the exchange, but rather develops the bishop on to e3. So it's important to develop your pieces first and then take control of the game from there. Um, Castle of castles. And now Anand goes with f4 finally. Now he was waiting for this f4 move uh, before, uh, and he didn't want to play it before uh, Castle of castles. And as soon as that casting happens, he starts with off his further attack with f4 trying to push pawns forward. Uh, the bishops are already centralized. If you see, can attack from either ways. So he's, he's playing a bit dynamic here and he can get his queen active pretty much quickly, connecting both the rooks. So Anand is leading in the, in the advantage here, I would say. 
here uh, Castro plates queen to c7, just trying to make sure that uh, he's uh, not in the front of the queen, eyeing the right diagonal as well. So that some point of time uh, he's not let he's not making sure that the pawn doesn't move forward. Otherwise, this diagonal gets opened up eventually. Knight can also come in after playing pawn forward. Maybe even f5 is possible there. So Aaron sees that coming and he wants to play pawn to g3 as well to make everything solid. So he just sidesteps the king uh, to h1. Generally, we see grandmasters playing such kind of moves. And then rook comes over to the e8 and Aaron plays bishop on f3. The idea of placing bishop on f3 is just to centralize the bishops further, also eyeing the queen side rook. So and that becomes more uh, aggressive piece by placing on f3. F3. The idea is in the game always is to develop your pieces in such a way that every piece of is active and participates in the attack or defense rather than just keeping it inactive like Castro has done right now for the light square bishop. He has yet to decide where the bishop goes here or he just tries to free and care of the bishop after playing pawn forward, having some pawn break. So here uh, Castro decides to develop his bishop on d7 and then uh, Anand moves his knight back, the idea of just opening up the bishop's diagonal as well as maybe trying to push pawn forward uh, and play it on from there. Here, uh, actually, uh, Castro offers the knight exchange and Anand takes it happily because after queen takes, it's a very good situation for Anand and he can start pushing uh, his pieces further. He gets his queen first on d3 uh, there, but uh, the idea... I think Arn can also play pawn forward. Uh, he loses the pawn. Oh, the, the knight is not guarded. So he had to save the knight first if he places the pawn forward. So he got his queen first on d3. Here, uh, rook comes on a on d8. And then Anand doubles up in the center as well. And then bishop comes up on c5, uh, c6, attacking the bishop, making sure the pawn structure is also solid. Eventually, and now Anand plays b4, a very aggressive move, I would say, just going for the center. Uh, and here, actually, what um, Kasper can do is go back with the queen, and that's what happened in the game. But it allows uh, Anand to push pawns forward, and that's what happens. Anand plays b5. Bishop has to retrieve no other choice, because if you take, of course, Anand can also take back. Now, Anand can take here, can even proceed the pawn. Uh, but he rather decides to play rook b1, which is the engine's top choice as well, so that he can probably push pawn forward next and defending the pawn with the rook as well, uh, along with the knight. So all the defenses are there lined up. Here, uh, Kasparov takes, and Anand takes with the knight, trying to take off the bishop pair from Kasparov. And that's what happens in the game. And now Anand takes with the queen. Now, bishop pair is off, and Anand has a bishop pair. It's an, it's an open position on the board, so bishop pairs will be more active, more uh, accurate to attack and defend as well. So it's it's a nice position for Anand already. The pawn is also weak. He can take next if he really wants to, but then he loses his pawn as well. So he has to be a bit careful. But yeah, that's how the game was going. And it is 1.4 in favor of Anand already. Here, Kasparov uh, plays rook to a8 trying to uh, just make sure that the queen uh, has to babysit the pawn as well, otherwise he loses the pawn there. So he played pawn forward on c4, just an ag another aggressive move, I would say, trying to go with pawns ahead, maybe try to exchange bishops as well eventually and get his rook and take that as well. Uh, but here, uh, uh, Castro responds with e5. Now he wants to break the pawn chain open, and that's okay for Anand, but he first attacks the queen with the bishop. Now, yes, he can take first, but how does it help him? Because after takes, uh, Castro will also take back, and then also you have to go ahead with the same move. You don't have any other option, much options remaining there. So instead in the game, he went with bishop first, attacking the queen, which goes back, and then he takes. And now you have already pushed queen backwards. That's the advantage. Here, after uh, Kasparov takes back the pawn, Anand places a5. Now, advantage of a5 is your bishop is going to be stable there. It's tough to dislocate this bishop from here, which means you're always controlling the d8 twice. 
that can that is always advantageous and now uh, this was one of the passive moves uh, which actually Casper played in the game, though it's the Indian's top choice as well. Uh, and let's try to find out why so. Because of course, if you play Rook, you lose you lose the pawn. You can lose the Rook as well. So there's no option. Can you go ahead with Knight somewhere? Nope. Your Knight is restricted already. If you try to go in the center, Queen takes or Rook takes both. So a couple of options there. So basically, you don't have much choices remaining. And opponent is really looking forward to maybe place the pawn forward again, or can even go ahead with the C pawn. So here, uh, Castro decides to just bring his bishop backwards so that the bishop is also defending the G7 pawn. And there's no threats as well, just in case he has to move the queen. And if there are a couple of attackers on the rook, a rook is already defended once, uh, and there will be no checks as well. So here, um, Kasper, uh, Anand plays. Uh, pawn to h3 uh, just making sure that there's no uh, knight move in the future even after playing h5 just making some uh, space for the king as well to retrieve just in case and here uh, castro responds with queen e6 trying to get his queen centralized uh, trying to make some space for the queen to move as well he needs to just get his other rook active as well which was very passive hasn't been developed yet in the game so Kastrov hasn't really used his pieces to the optimum level here, which Anand has been able to do so far in the game. That's why he's ahead as well. Now, Anand plays rook d5. Rook lifts are always nice. Maybe trying to go for the center pawn eventually by placing bishop. So a few moves can happen from there because there is only two defenders to the pawn. And now Anand has got three attackers as well. Maybe he can just try and negotiate one of them by taking and then exchanges uh, the center pawn. So ex exchanges can happen here, but actually uh, what happens is, yes, you are losing out the rook here. So Kasparov takes uh, the rook and Anand takes back with the pawn. Now you must be thinking that's a bad exchange, but it's not. And the reason, because you have just got a bishop pair, which would be very powerful. Rooks aren't that active here and bishops are actually so active pieces matter not the inactive ones even if you have more of them so it doesn't matter here uh Kasparov plays queen to g6 trying to maybe push pawn forward attacking the rook as well just in case you just miss out on a simple move say you try to move the queen somewhere and then you lose out on the rook with a check so that's a good place for the queen to be in and here uh Anand plays c5 trying to push his pawn attack forward. Now, he's just storming in with the pawns because he wants to develop one of them, promote one of them to the queen. Now here, uh, Casper plays the best move again, trying to push the bishop backwards. And there's just, uh, actually, bishop can come here as well. But the disadvantage of this is you're just allowing rook to come with their momentum. And then you can have some pawn forward as well after placing a rook on g5. So the best move as for the computer as well is to place your bishop on e2 rather. And here, uh, Castro plays rook to e5, uh, just trying to maybe go ahead with the same plan, attacking the pawn on g2. Here, uh, Anand goes with queen d7. Now, queen d7 looks okay, okay, like you don't see the real advantage of it unless uh, you try to take this pawn because once you do, there's nothing stopping you from promoting one of these to the queen. So queen is pretty much active. They're not a passive move. Also to be noticed, queen can come back. Queen can defend the bishop as well once you play your bishop there just in case. So it's not a very uh, passive move. It's still very active. But what Anand could have done the best is also the same, which he did. Okay. So here, uh, yes, Castro plays rook to g5 trying to attack on the g2 pawn, which can be saved with the rook. Now, here can some small tactics can happen always in the game because if he would have played pawn forward here, he's attacking the rook uh, as well. So that is something which you need to take care of because now the queen has moved already, as you we were discussing. Once there's no pawn here, queen is on a very good square to attack actually. But here, actually, Castro also realized that Anand is not going to fall for some small tricks like these. So uh, he just tries to double up straight away and Anand defends by placing his rook on g1. Here, finally, uh, now 
here again, Castro plays pawn to e3, which was the worst move of the game for him because suddenly, if you see, the engine advantage has changed a lot. Now, why is so? Because you're going to lose a pawn for sure. And after you do, say, if I take, what is the, I'll take here, what is the best move for white? White can just go here with the rook, uh, black, sorry. Uh, and then you can just push your pawns and there's nothing stopping your queen. Uh, again, getting you yourself a queen. So there's no control that uh, black has got here. Even you can promote your A pawn as well. Everything is free up because you have just taken on the pawn as well. And you are still controlling the backwards after placing pawn forward here, which is which would be D5. But here Anand went with D5 first. The ideas of that, of course, he cannot take with the bishop. And once he can, he takes with the pawn back, he is defending g2 further as well. So uh, here, uh, trickily, Kasparov goes uh, on g3, rook to g3, trying to just create some pressure, maybe take on a pawn later on, get his queen as well active, uh, because this can happen if you try and take something, then this can be some attack as well. So once you take, for example, let's say queen takes and uh, queen comes here. And if you miss out this move of placing your king here, and rather you say something, play something else, which is like this, then that's made in two because you can take on the pawn. There's only one move, legal move, which uh, you have to take. And after that, it's a simple mate. Um, so yeah, that was just the last, last fighting chance when he played a rook to uh, g3 there just trying to make sure that something might happen up but anand takes the uh, queen there uh, the pawn there and trickily again uh Kasparov doesn't play queen to h6 but to but queen to e, e6 there so same way he's just tying the same pawn uh, so, so that there is um it's it, if it's just not noticed by uh, anand somehow but anand of course sees everything and goes with king to h2 and now there's no way that uh, he can save both the rooks because uh, a8 and g3, both the rooks are being attacked right now. And there's no way that you can save both. And here, uh, finally, Castro resigns uh, to Vishwanathan Anand. So that was a fascinating game, as I said in the beginning. And Anand won it in 35 moves. What better? I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching this entire week for sure because I'll be putting up some really good games Anand has played and you'll be fascinated to see them. I hope you like the video. Do let me know feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.